Intimidated to raw feed your growing puppy? Don't worry, I was too. It's very important to get a homemade raw diet right for puppies so they can grow and develop properly. So let's go through my raw feeding journey with my puppy Matsu to see what I did wrong and what I did right. My first, do. Switch from commercial food to raw right away. I can't stress this enough. Starting your puppy on a food that you want to switch them to should happen before they imprint on their old food. This is the stage of life where they're the most open to sampling different flavors and textures. So there's no better time than now to introduce slimy secreting organs and chewy meaty bones. When I brought Matsu home at 8 weeks, I instantly put down a small bowl of raw meat, bone, and organ for him. I thought, from this moment on, he will never eat commercial food again. But to my surprise, he was a little confused. The chunks were cut really small, and he seemed to like the taste, but he still seemed to have trouble chewing them. Now, there were two ways I could have gone about handling this issue. One of them is a do, one of them is a don't. Don't starve them into eating. I could have just said tough and kept offering Matsu chunks, but I noticed the problem was that he couldn't chew them well, even when they were super small. With healthy adult dogs, a tough love method like this can work great, but with puppies, withholding food can become dangerous. Unlike adult dogs, puppies can't regulate nutrients in their body and absolutely need nourishment frequently throughout the day. Knowing this, instead of starving Matsu into eating, I blended everything up into a grind and offered it to him this way. And that did the trick. You can also mix in a little of their old food if they need some encouragement. In case you were wondering, yes, at times I also blended up his raw meaty bone. Which brings me to my next do. Do feed an appropriately sized raw meaty bone. Raw meaty bones are your puppy's main source of calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium, which are needed for proper growth. This makes them critical and non-negotiable in the meal. I wanted Matsu to learn to be confident chewing raw meaty bones as soon as possible, so I was a little discouraged when it seemed like even small chicken necks and paws were still too hard for him to chew. I mean, he was only 8 weeks, so I adapted to his needs and switched those out for smaller but more expensive meaty bones, quail. Quail meaty bones worked a lot better because of how small and soft they were. If your puppy just won't eat any meaty bones no matter what you try, I suggest getting a bone meal supplement as a replacement. When giving bone meal, and even when giving raw meaty bones, you need to know how much to give so you don't oversupply nutrients. This brings me to my next don't. Don't feed an unbalanced meal, especially long term. This is a big one and sounds overwhelming, but it's something that's very important for puppies. As I mentioned earlier, a puppy's body cannot make missing nutrients on its own, so they need a balanced meal each day to develop properly. I started researching raw diets for puppies two years before getting Matsu. Now, no, two years of research isn't required to safely feed a homemade raw diet to a puppy, but you certainly shouldn't wing it either. If you're not comfortable feeding a homemade raw diet yet, you can always feed a balanced pre-made grind until then. There's also a ton of helpful information in my raw feeding cheat sheet for puppies and adults, which is a great reference for beginners. To get it, head over to pauseofprey.com.